Hello there, it's Sarah from Paper Lovely. Thanks for joining me today. I'm working with the Simon Says Stamp February 2018 card kit, and this is the second part of my 10 cards one kit. If you haven't seen the first five cards, you can check those out in my previous video. So before I get started with card number six, here I'm showing you I have a bunch of ephemera and cut aparts left over. I had purchased these to use along with the kit, and I know that I'm probably not going to end up using them. So rather than hoard them, I thought I would share. I'm going to split them into two separate piles, and if you leave me a comment below in about a week or so, I will do a random drawing and I'll send them out to two of you. So for card number six, I want to create a desk scene, and I'm using a yellow card base here. I'm adding ATG as close to the edge as I can because I want to cover the whole front with this pretty pink grid paper. And then I'm going to take that over to my mini guillotine and I will trim off those edges. Next I'm going to then create my desk portion, so I'm using this dark walnut wood grain and I'm trimming that using my uh, MFT Blueprints 32 frame die. I'll use my ATG gun and place that on the center of the panel. Then off to the side there, you'll see I've got a cut apart that has a typewriter on it. I'm going to use my uh, Tim Holtz scissors and I'll just fussy cut around that. I'm going to go as close to the edge as I can. So for that typewriter, I wanted to make my own sentiment. So I've trimmed this down to an inch and a quarter by two and a half inches. And next I'm going to take my craft knife and I'm just going to slice along where that paper is. I went just, just slightly over each edge because my paper is slightly wider. And then here you'll see how that will fit in there. I wanted to use the sentiment, hello crafty friend. This was so small, I wasn't sure how to use it. So uh, when I thought of this idea, I was like, ah, oh, yes. Um, so I'm just gonna stamp that using Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink, and then I'll slide that in there to make sure that it looks right. Then next, I need some craft supplies to put on my desk. So I'm gonna use the marker, the pencil, and the scissors, and I'm stamping those out using Lawn Fawn's Minty Fresh, Peachy Keen, and Fresh Cut Grass. I went ahead and fussy cut those, and then I pulled a few pieces from the ephemera pack, and these are some tags and uh, other little flags and things. So I'm using my scoreboard and I'm gonna create some cards out of these. So I've scored them at about, I think I did three quarters of an inch. Uh, yeah. And then I'm just gonna trim off the excess there. I had originally planned to use the other two pieces as some embellishments on the front of the card and then I just decided that wasn't gonna work. So I ended up taking that floral, the blue flower piece and creating a third card out of that. And I fussy cut out a few of the markers and the scissors. I ended up only using uh, three, one of each color of the markers and pencils. And I added some eighth inch score tape behind that and then some half inch score tape behind one side of the cards and two strips of that behind the typewriter. And then I wanted to have the paper of the typewriter popped up a little bit. So I had an extra piece of some Stampin' Up! foam strips and I place that behind just to sort of help curl that over a little bit so it really looks like it's coming out of the typewriter. Then finally, I went back to my eighth inch score tape and ran that along the edge of the top of that paper so I could secure that down onto the card front. All right, now I'm just putting everything together. I've peeled off that score tape and then I'm gonna place down the markers and the pencils. And then finally, I'll place all of the little cards. Then 
Then lastly, I'm peeling off that score tape behind the paper there. And I'll press that down, just making sure that's nice and secure. Then I felt like I needed something inside that top card, so I pulled out the little heart that came in the stamp set, and I'm just stamping that on the inside using a Lawn Fawn Peachy Keen ink. For the inside of the card, I'm using a Nina Panel Trim 2 4 by 5 and a quarter, and I've placed that sending you a handcrafted hello sentiment back together again. I'm going to stamp that using Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. I'll go ahead and place that on the inside of the card. And that will complete card number six. For card number seven, I'm gonna use this square embossing folder that came in the kit. Uh, and this works really great. It's It's got some fantastic texture to it. And I'm just using, again, a Nina panel trimmed to a four by five and a quarter there. Here you can see some of that great texture. Then I'm gonna trim out one of these leftover strips of the cameras. And I had this idea of using the thanks sentiment that each circle was just about the same size as the camera lens. So what I'm doing there is just uh, pressing my stamp into my Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. And then I'll take some post-it note tape and I'm placing that on either side of the letter that I'm using. And I'm just going to continue doing that all the way down until I spell out the word thanks. Next, I'm gonna fussy cut out this larger camera. This was one of the stripes from the 12 by 12 paper that I purchased to go with the kit. And here I'm gonna put all of those elements together. So I'm gonna attach my embossed panel. And then next I'll place my camera strip. And then finally, I'm going to take that larger camera and I'll pop that up using some scotch foam tape. For the inside, I'm again going to use a Nina panel trim to 4x5 and a quarter. And I'm going to stamp out the sentiment, you make everything colorful, using Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. Finally, I'll attach that on the inside of the card base. And that will complete card number 7. For card number eight, I'm sure this card is going to make a lot of you laugh, but when I saw that painting palette in the stamp set, all I could think of was Bob Ross. So I'm going to make a Bob Ross card. Uh, I went ahead and trimmed out this striped panel using my MFT Blueprints 32 frame die. I'm going to place that on the top of my white card base. Then here I'm going to take this mustard colored paper and I'm going to trim down a square that is two by two or two and a half by two and a half inches. And then the watercolor paper I'm trimming to two and a quarter by two and a quarter inches. So I'm going to make an easel. Um, then for the legs of the easel, I'm using that same mustard colored paper and I'm just trimming off some quarter inch strips. 
Here I'm going to paint a little scene to place on my easel. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I think Bob Ross was probably my first introduction to art. I remember being a little kid and watching him on TV, putting in his sky and water and lots of happy little trees. So I'm just kind of following that uh, plan. Here I'm adding the sky and the water. And in between all of my layers, I am stopping to use my heat gun just to speed things along a little bit. Next, I'm gonna add in some mountains. and some tree trunks. And some happy little trees and bushes. I'll add just a little bit of sunshine there, but in all honesty, when this dried, you can't really see it. And then finally, I'm gonna go and add some rocks to sort of uh, define my horizon a little bit better there. So once that's finished, I did go ahead and stamp out the painting palette and I used some Hero Arts Cup of Joe ink to do that. And here I'm just adding uh, a little bit of each color onto the palette. I'm gonna add some score tape behind my painting because it is warped a little bit from my watercolor. I wanna make sure that sticks nice and tight. I can't find my usual block that I use to tear my tape and it's driving me crazy to have to use that one. I, it's, isn't that awful when you lose one of your favorite tools and can't place it? I, I have found it now in the meantime, but it was this whole time I was filming I couldn't find it. It was driving me crazy. So I placed that on top of the uh, yellow square that I trimmed out and I'm again going to use score tape because it's still got a little bit of a warp to it so I just want to make sure that it's going to stick down nice and tight. I'm going to add eighth inch score tape behind three of the quarter inch strips that I trimmed. And here I'm just going to lay those out to create something that looks like an easel. So I've laid all three down and once I'm happy with those, I'm going to take and make uh, some pencil marks and then I'll trim off the top and bottom. I didn't want the easel to be running off uh, onto the white border of the card. Although when I trimmed them, somehow, even though I made lines, it did not end up perfect. So I do have the two on either end are just slightly too short so I think if I were to do this again I would just let them go off onto the white border attach them down individually and then trim along the edges but I didn't and I didn't want to redo it it was close enough that it it was fine it didn't bother me too much so I left it how it was um, but if you want to try and recreate this I would suggest just letting it hang off the edge so I did attach those three strips using some glue dots just to make sure they wouldn't uh, move around on me. And then here I'm removing the uh, backing from the score tape and then I'm going to place that down uh, on the front of my card base.
Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add my painting. So I'll peel off that score tape and add that somewhat in the center. And I also trimmed off a piece of that same yellow paper uh, measuring a half inch wide. And I used some of my Stampin' Up! foam strips um, just to pop that up so it looks more like the tray of the easel. Finally, I did fussy cut out that palette and I'm gonna attach that using some glue dots. And then for the inside of the card, I wanted a Bob Ross themed sentiment. So I went with sending you some happy little trees and I used my Cricut to create that. I had it trim out a rectangle measuring four by five and a quarter and the font that I used is called William. And that will complete card number eight. For card number nine, I decided I wanted to make a quilt. I do a lot of sewing. Um, sewing and paper crafting are my two uh, things that I do, uh, the majority of crafty type things that I do. So um, I'm trimming down some Nina cardstock to an inch and a quarter. Then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna cut them into inch and a quarter uh, squares. And I'm gonna do the same thing with those pattern papers that I have off to the side there. So here I'm taking those little squares and I'm going to trim off uh, two quarter inch strips. I'm sorry, three quarter inch strips and that'll leave me with one half inch strip. And I'm gonna do that with a bunch, of, not all of them, but a bunch of them. So I made four different types of squares for my quilt and I'm gonna take you through one square of each pattern. So here I'm gonna take um, the one of the quarter inch strips and I'm gonna make a cross square. So I'm adding one across the center and then I'm gonna take the same pattern and I will add that across the opposite side. But I didn't want it to be too bulky so I ended up placing one side down, trimming that and then I used the remainder to add onto the other side. Then the next type of block I did, I used the half inch strips that I had left over. So I'm marking those to get half inch squares. And then I'm gonna take each half inch square and I'm gonna trim that uh, on the diagonal from corner to corner. And I'll do that with two different colors of the pattern paper. So this is sort of going to be the opposite of the last block that I did. I'm gonna leave a white cross in the center and I'm gonna use these to make four blocks on either end of the square. So I'm gonna place the yellow blocks on the outside corner and then the striped blocks, I'll match those up. So I'll have a square on each of the four corners. For the next block, I'm gonna again use some of the half inch strips um, and I'm gonna put one on either end of the square.
If you're wondering where those pink squares came from, that is the back of the uh, scissors paper. Then for my last block, I'm gonna again go back to using the quarter inch stripes and I'm gonna add in uh, four of those. So one, one section I'm gonna leave white as if it were white fabric so that I'll have a little bit of white on each square. Um, and I'm just randomizing that as I make them where I'm gonna leave that white stripe. Okay, so now that I've got all of my squares complete, I'm gonna work directly on a white card base. I'm just using my grid there to mark off my centers and I'm gonna lay these out and I'll again use tacky glue to attach all of those to the top of the card base. So I'm just checking there, making sure everything's gonna be even. And then I'll start gluing all of them down. So here is a close-up of that once it was finished. And I wanted it to look handmade, but it was it felt a little too messy to me. So I went ahead and trimmed off some quarter inch strips of Nina cardstock. And I'm using my ATG gun on the back of those. And I'm gonna place those across in between all of the squares, sort of like a grid. So I started in the middle there. I'm gonna work my way um, up the card. And then I'm gonna attach the last four strips going across the card. Then I'll go ahead and trim all of the excess off the edges with my guillotine trimmer. And there's the completed card front. So I wanted to again go with a different sentiment and I went back to my Cricut. I used the phrase, uh, in this crazy quilt of life, I'm glad you're in my block of friends. I again had the Cricut trim out a panel that was four by five and a quarter and I used the same font uh, called William. And that completes card number nine. Okay, so after the crazy details of those last two cards, I'm going to keep card number 10 really simple. I loved this paper and I wanted to let it shine. So I'm using my Blueprints 32 frame die to trim out a panel for the top of my card base. And I'm going to use those wooden scissors. Here I'm taking my Tim Holtz ruler and I'm just going to create a line about two thirds of the way up. And then I'm gonna cut into that line. I'm gonna go just slightly over halfway through. I'm gonna make it look like those wooden scissors are cutting this line. So I'm just gonna curl that paper a little bit to give it some dimension. I thought about maybe putting some uh, foam tape behind it and then I, I I just was afraid it was going to be too thick so I just went with uh, ATG and I'll attach that there to the top of the card base and if you curl this with your fingers it really does give it some nice dimension finally I'm going to take those wooden scissors and I'm going to add some tacky glue behind that but you want to be careful with these. Um, they're a little bit more fragile than they feel. I, as I was sticking this uh, into the opening there, I did break off one of the loops of the scissors. So I was able to fix it thanks to that tacky glue. I just added a bunch on the back of it and stuck it into place. Um, but if you decide to make this, I would just caution you to be careful. For the inside of the card, I'm again using my trusty Nina panel trim two four by five and a quarter, and I'm going to use that sentiment crafters going to craft. I'm stamping that out using Lawn Fawn lobster ink. I'll use my ATG gun to attach that on the inside of the card base. And 
And that will complete card number 10. Here is a quick look back at all of the cards from today. Additional photos as well as a full list of supplies can be found at my blog post linked in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a comment or a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.